Hi guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. I'm here with another House of the Dragon reaction. Um, today I'm going to be reacting to season two, episode five, titled Regent. Obviously, I think I know what that title means, and I'm interested to see the aftermath of Rook's Rest and what happened to Aegon. So yeah, let's just get into it. Okay, based on his body language, I'm guessing that Corliss already knows that Rainey's was killed. But I would really like it, like, if they showed the characters reacting to finding these things out at some point. I feel like they've... They obviously did the same thing with Jaehaerys, like, cutting to the aftermath rather than showing what actually happened. Behold! The traitor dragon Maelys! Slain at Brook's rest by your king. To by Eggon. your king. Is that Aegon? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, Lord. Ugh. What happened? We took the castle. I left a meager garrison behind to protect it, and the king's dragon, Sunfire, was long in the dying. So Sunfire's already dead? What? It is merely that the gentler sex heretofore has not been much privy to the strategies of battle or their execution. There is yeah, no like maybe somebody should have taught Rainier that before this. The phrase. No phrase. Come on, guy. At the twins. Crickin stalks greybeards are marching south. Our terms are simple, Lord Bracken. Renounce the false King Aegon as a usurper. And bend the knee to me. Or your house. Bend burn. the knee to him. I would sooner be the Lord of Bones and Sin. That is a very cool shot of Caraxes. Like, not for nothing, but why did you bring the Blackwoods with you, of all things? They are pig-headed, intransigent. They would rather burn than succumb. Many and more armies have broken themselves hmm? against... Doesn't really look like the, um... The Eerie in Game of Thrones. Are you hmm. listening? For too long I have looked to him for strength. If I must be supplicant to my own husband, what does that make me? You're kind of like shutting the barn door after the horse has already escaped on that one. The finest swordsman. Please, God, tell me that's not his mom. My favorite son. It... For God's sake. Is the duck not to your liking, Your Grace? There's also goose, if you prefer it. I like the goose myself. <laughs> like, <laughs> why is he still here? Rest. I can't imagine, like, you know, you're having these weird, presumably drug-induced hallucinations, and you know there's a witch Messing with you, just like go stay somewhere else. I believe Woolen Blackwood is the roof alone is needed tending since the reign of Aeneas and the storerooms and on the way tower. <laughs> I love him. Corridors are almost impossible with the, the bats of Heron Hall. The ship. Interesting, perhaps nod to House Went. I venture there are Smith. Uh, there is, of course, the matter of payment. After the <laughs> tragedy that befell his father. You should address me as my king. But you're the prince. What would you call the husband of the queen? Well, the king. There it is then. Consul. That last bit seems unnecessary, don't you think? Shady, shady, shady. I love that this guy is like totally actually the kind of standing up to Damon though. Steel. 
that the hand speaks with the king's voice, Sir Christian. Oh boy. I wouldn't exactly call Heron Hall a jewel. The gates be closed. No one is to leave or enter save with our consent. Um, what? That's a little extreme, bro. The dog is still there. I did not give you leave to speak my name. I hate it when mommy and daddy fight. That fool Egon is unlike to survive. The realm will suffer if fame and one eye rules. You should pray you never meet someone. Oh. They will cut you down soon as wish you good day. I'd have the mm. same thing about you. Sure, we'll I'll see. I'll cross you no further. I'm sure you're tight. She cannot succeed, Alice. Even if I willed it to be so, the people who support her will not be led by her. They look to a man for strength. Who's better suited to it? The high towers with their scheming or Viserys first true heir? <laughs> when I take King's Land. I should not ask enough of my house. It is a sign of her great He does have a point. I would make you my heir. I am blood and fire. Driftmark must pass to salt and sea. What? Isn't that so convenient that he actually offered it to her, but she turned it down? We should have expected nothing more from a man who ordered the slaughter of a child in his mother's arms. That is a lie, and I will have the man who told it brought before me. Oh, your man is half the kingdom, my prince. Know this, interloper. The Riverlands are an ancient place, watched closely by the eyes of old gods and new. And dragon or no. We shall not raise our banners for a tyrant. Snap. Oh, I'm gonna die. Vagar is big, but Cyrax is quicker. So was Melis. Melis fought two dragons and one of them is slain. Shall I fight for my birthright or shall I wait here until we are- I can't asleep? believe Sunfire just went out like that. That is so not the vibe. There are records here, surely, of our line and of those who fell out of it. There could be scores of them. It's a mad sword. Okay, so that is a wrap on season two, episode five, titled Regent. Um, obviously referring to the fact that Aemond is now regent in Aegon's stead. Overall, I thought this was kind of like an okay episode. It wasn't the best episode of the series by far, but obviously like it's kind of a, um, a transitional part of the storyline because something big happened in the last episode. Obviously something big isn't going to happen again. I felt, um, I don't know. I guess I just felt a little unsatisfied. I can't really, I mean, I guess I feel like they're obviously taking Aemond in like the full villain direction, but I don't feel like that had enough development to really explain it. Like we haven't really seen him be evil before and the implication that he, well, no, the, the assumption that he, the assumption that he did that to Aegon intentionally on the part of Alicent seemed a little surprising. Obviously, it sucked seeing her kind of take a backseat and get shafted by everyone she loves. Not a very unfamiliar spot for her to be in, but still, it's not gotta be fun. And again, I know, you know, obviously, I like her character, but the amount of stuff that they pile on her and like make her feel guilty for is wild. <laughs> Obviously, they already kind of made her feel guilty for the death of Jaehaerys. And now she said something mean to Aegon and he took off on his dragon and went into battle and his dragon died and he almost died. Like, can she just get a break and have 
the world not fall apart every time she makes the decision. That would be nice. Obviously interesting to see Damon pretty much outright say that he is planning on usurping the throne from Rhaenyra. Although I think there was also an interesting aspect of um an interesting aspect of the role that Alice is playing in that because obviously like her what she's saying to Damon and the weird dreams that she's giving him are sort of pushing him are sort of pushing him in that direction. It was nice to meet Jane Aaron finally. I hope we get to see more of her. I love Amanda Collin from um Raised by Wolves. Jace going to meet the phrase by himself is interesting, and, it, and Rhaenyra's in reaction to it was interesting. Like, I would have expected her to be a little more upset, but I guess not. I liked Kristen's acknowledgement of the horror of using dragons in war. I thought that was a good world-building element that Game of Thrones definitely missed out on, kind of. Even though, obviously, most people don't find Sir Kristen sympathetic, so they might not um, care what he has to say about what about the horrors of Dragon War. Oh, so annoyed that they had Corliss ask Bela to be his heir and her turn it down. Like, again, that is just way too convenient and lets him off the hook or, you know, lets the book version of him off the hook for making sexist decisions like every, or not like every, but like pretty much every other person in the story does. And yeah, it, it's just kind of a heavy-handed setup to the person that he's going to name heir. And again, I find it convenient that everyone around him's kind of letting him off the hook for doing for um, so he doesn't have to do something that could potentially be difficult. Oh yeah, and it was definitely cool a to see the River Lords like have a personality <laughs> and um, negatively react towards Damon. I liked that. I like that they came at him with a kind of forceful attitude. And I like that Damon was experiencing the obvious consequences of his actions. Because obviously, Damon and a lot of other Targaryens are basically like, well, we can do whatever we want because we're the Dragon Lords, and that's that. And I feel like Damon embodies that mentality more than almost any Targaryen who ever lived. And so seeing the fact that that's not true and he can't do that. And people will fight against him even if he feels all-powerful. I thought that was a really good world-building aspect of this episode. Obviously, the introduction of the idea of other people riding dragons was how the episode ended. I think that was a pretty interesting place to end. And obviously, I'm definitely interested to see how that bears fruit in the next couple of episodes. So yeah, overall, I thought the episode was fine wasn't my favorite. Um, it just kind of was there. It told you what it needed to, and that's that. So I will be covering the rest of House of the Dragon Season 2 as it airs. If you would like to follow along with me, like and subscribe.